Hey guys, this is Arden, and I'm here with How to Roleplay in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Part 3. Okay, so first, if you have your hands full, like with a sword and shield, which I do not have a sword, a one-handed sword, I have a claymore, uh, but if you have a sword and shield in your hand, uh, either sheath your sword or disequip your shield and then heal or cast a spell because it's sort of weird to cast a spell while holding a sword. Second, if you're out in the wilderness and you need to repair your fur or leather armor and you have a repair hammer and say for example a wolf pelt or um, some cloth then use the repair hammer and and for every repair hammer that you use also drop a piece of the wolf pelt or or one of the wolf pelt pieces and or a uh, piece of cloth I don't have a repair hammer but if I was to use up one repair hammer then I would drop the wolf pelt and I believe it will eventually go away. Okay, I have a lot of suggestions submitted by uh, a user named, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, and I'm probably going to uh, slaughter it, Ainleyan, I think? I'm not sure exactly, sorry about that. But his first idea is when you light a torch, light it with either an already existing fire, as it, if this campfire was lit, then that would count. Or with another torch, if there's like a torch on a wall, in a fort or something. Or on a bridge, you know. And then, if you want to put it out, either put it in water if you want to save it, or drop it and stamp it out. So say I have my torch lit, after using a fire spell, of course. Now you do have flare, so you can always use that. Um, touch spells would be even better because it would be sort of like touching your spell or sorry <laughs> touching your uh, your torch so anyway do it like this sort of go like that if you want and then to put it out if you don't have water nearby then simply drop it and then pretend you're stamping it out if you want you can like jump up and down on it or something Unless it burns out by itself, of course. If it burns out by itself, then just leave it alone. <laughs> well, it disappears, actually, if it disappears by itself. If you don't want to have it lying on the ground, you can stick it in a barrel or something. Like so. Okay. His next idea was to read books as you have interest. And I'm going to add to this idea by saying... If you're a scholar or a mage, then this would especially apply to you, uh, because they would want to be well-educated and sell them when you're finished with them and go buy a new one, and maybe read it every night before you go to bed. The next thing that he suggested was to use items while summoning. Now, say for example you have some scamp skin or a skull, then, or say you want to summon a skeleton and you have a bone. Drop the bone on the ground and then use the spell. This will severely limit how much you can conjure, but it will also make it not so easy to just rely on a summonable ally. And that is all from him. The next well, he sort of contributed to this. Is don't try to become a vampire. Oh, that's a wolf over there. Um, and if you do, then just go with it. Just sort of let, let the vampirism happen. And look, I've got an enemy. Actually, you know what? Here, I'm going to go back here. And then 
one thing I came up with was this is sort of an annoying thing that I am honestly not going to do myself. But if you're going through a bush, then sort of just tap it or like just instead of just running through, then walk through at, because you'd have to push your way through the bush. The next thing suggested by Fallout Survivor 23 is if you want something to drink but yet you don't want to drink what? things such as alcohol or uh, you know any sort of alcoholic beverage then go to the well you can actually just go to an inn or if you have some fruits or vegetables then what you should do here let me grab some real quick what do you have a look around you won't find better I'll buy some apples and how about some orange or an, an orange come back okay So go to your mortar and pestle, or whatever you have, add an apple, and an orange, and then rename the potion, juice. Create that, and then whenever you're thirsty, just go ahead and drink the juice. So that way you have no ill effects from drinking, and you can drink every day. The next idea comes from, next two ideas come from... Katie Elizabeth, I believe that's her name. Her idea was, don't run around in buildings, and when I had my Let's Play, which I have deleted, I decided not to run around in buildings or the city at all. So, don't run in buildings, because that would not be very appropriate behavior. And you could even extend this, like I said I did, to the whole city. But in the Imperial the City, it's sort of a big city, so that's Venice, sort of annoying to do. They have the worst job in she takes all day. Anyway, th her next idea was, if you're in a multi-level house, and you want to get, you're on the second floor, or third floor, or whatever, and you want to get down a level, don't jump down over the ledge, because that's really not what someone would do, unless they're an acrobat. If you're an acrobat, then that's acceptable. People will just think you're weird. So, that is it for how to roleplay in The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Part 3. Stay tuned, because I am going to be making more class videos and more how to roleplay videos in the future. So, have a good day.